Reddit's top functional medicine questions, answered by doctors, Jim and Janine Fox. This particular uh, question is about ferritin levels. And this is something we check routinely. It's not checked routinely, but we do it. Because we've seen so many people have issues with ferritin over the years. Now this particular person has had their ferritin checked and they've had some pretty high ranges. Shouldn't, if I'm assuming it's a male, and 400 to 800 is pretty high, okay? They've also had an MRI, which didn't show anything bad. MRI is not gonna pick up the iron unless it's really nasty. Person also admits to drinking a lot of alcohol and they've been diagnosed with fatty liver. It's a common occurrence nowadays, it really is. They say that's unrelated to the ferritin, possibly. But let's talk about something else that's going on. Fatty liver always causes inflammation. Inflammation will make the body store iron, ferritin. So you high inflammation, you're gonna store more ferritin. Now, is it dangerous? Yes, it can be. It can be dangerous, very dangerous for you. But the person actually admit, he said he's been uh, to two different doctors, they all say it's unrelated to his alcohol. Probably more of an indirect relationship than rather than a direct relationship, but I think it's related somehow. They also went out oh, pretty normal. They said other than the, the gamma GT, uh, the GGT, which you know probably caused some drinking. Okay, so we know one thing this particular person's going to have to do. They're going to have to slow down on the alcohol consumption. Already got a fatty liver. Putting alcohol on top of a fatty liver, which normally the fatty livers we see are caused from like the diet, uh, excess carbohydrates, sugars. Uh, especially the high fructose corn syrup, things like that. And actually alcohol and high fructose corn syrup, they kind of metabolize just about the same way in there and they will cause a fatty liver indirectly for sure. So uh, this particular person's kind of worried about it, talking about genetics, and they really want to know where it's coming from. I think it's coming from the inflammation. We've got a fatty liver disease, know that, and we know that we consume too much alcohol. Now, if he's admitting to, to consuming that much alcohol, Probably the best thing to do is to stop or slow, at least slow down on alcohol. I would probably suggest stopping, especially if we've got a, a fairly high ferritin as well, because that's just an extra burden on that liver and it doesn't need it at this point in time. So what we want to do is change our diet, probably big time. Uh, we, would, we would highly recommend that just to help with the fatty liver. We want to see a lot of other lab work to go along with this person. You know, we, we put a ferritin on like our expanded panel or something, which we just check it routinely because we see it routinely pretty high on some individuals and they have no idea, no clue, nothing in their family, no genetic background for it or anything else, but it's there. So something that tells you something's going on. You want to check other markers, some of your inflammatory markers. You want to look at your vitamin status, your B12, your Ds, et cetera, et cetera, because that's all going to be part of helping us get this uh, inflammatory response down down from where it is now. Because I promise you, if you see his inflammatory markers, they're probably gonna be pretty high, like a C-reactive protein in soil. So, somebody says, anyone got some help? Yeah, we got a lot of help with this guy. Uh, we can lower the alcohol consumption, we can change his diet, we can do some other lab work to find out if everything else is working right, or is it starting to affect other areas? Okay, so now we've addressed the other things that you might wanna look at here. There's some supplements that really might help this particular person one of which, if we've got a high inflammatory process going on, our SPM select. SPMs, if you look at the research on them, they're phenomenal at bringing down the inflammation. And if we've got a fatty liver, one of the best things is something called tocotrienols. It's kind of a subset of the vitamin E family. Works great, it really does. Had a lot of experience with it, really, really does a great job. Now, something else that I want to point out to you most people that find out something like this are going to run out and buy a liver support product of some sort. Probably not the best thing to do because if a liver is congested, fatty liver, it's congested, it's not functioning quite correctly, and you're going to start, most of these herbs that they use in these things are going to start forcing the liver to work a little bit harder. It's already working hard. It's got a problem on its hands. Not necessarily the best way to approach it. First thing we want to approach, get that inflammation down. Second thing, start working on that fatty liver diet and probably the tocotrienols. Uh, if you got any comments or anything, just be sure to leave them down below. We'll be glad to get back to you.